I'm Corey Kukuru for 1623 Studios, and this is the story of the Flying Santa. In the late 1920s, William Winkapaw, a pioneer of early aviation, operated a seaplane base and flying field in Rockland, Maine. He often flew over Penobscot Bay to transport lobster cargo from Newfoundland. On several occasions, he rescued sick or injured fishermen from the sea, as well as inhabitants of the bay's most remote and desolate islands. Many of the excursions forced Winkapaw to navigate through treacherous weather, machine-rattling nor'easters, whiteout blizzards, and ever-persistent New England fog. On those occasions, at a time when air-to-ground communication was nearly non-existent, Captain Winkapaw was guided to safety only by the flashing beacons from lighthouses that dotted the craggy coastlines. On December 25, 1929, as a gesture of gratitude to those who looked after him, Captain Winkapaw began a Christmas time tradition of airdropping care packages and supplies to the lighthouse keepers and their families. In just a few short years, Winkapaw and his young son Bill Jr. gift bomb presents weighing up to 16 pounds to more than 100 lighthouses and coast guard stations from the Canadian Maritimes to Rhode Island. The tradition made national headlines. Winkapaw became known as the Flying Santa. He relocated to Winthrop, Massachusetts, began to dress the part, and secured Boston-based La Terrain Coffee as a longtime sponsor. Bill Jr., at the age of 17, became the youngest licensed pilot in the state and flew solo for portions of the lighthouse routes. Visits to Cape Ann included Thatcher Island, Anasquam, Eastern Point, and Ten Pound Island. In 1936, Bill Jr. introduced his father to his teacher at Winthrop High School, Edward Rowe Snow a coastal historian descended from sea captains and a budding reconnaissance aerial photographer. As the Flying Santa program expanded, Captain Winkapaw flew the northern route while Bill Jr. and the aptly named Mr. Snow covered southern New England. When Winkapaw received an assignment to transport gold and machinery from mines in Bolivia, Bill Jr. and Snow continued the custom in his absence. Jr. eventually got his own South American missions, leaving Snow to temporarily carry the tradition in New England on his own. In 1940, Snow, accompanied by his wife Anna Merle, got a Christmas present of their own as they neared Gloucester's 10-pound island lighthouse, which was operated at the time by Edward Hopkins. Hopkins' wife Evelyn knew the flying Santa was on his way early that morning, so she nailed stacks of newspapers into the ground that spelled Merry Christmas. Snow photographed the message and sent it to the Associated Press. The picture ran in newspapers nationwide. That night, Hopkins' son, Ed Jr., rode out to 10-pound to deliver the evening paper. Imagine his parents' surprise when they saw their unique island home plastered across the front page. The program existed sporadically during World War II. Captain Winkapaw was the chief of maintenance at Quonset Naval Air Station in Rhode Island. Bill Jr. became a flight instructor for the Navy, and Snow flew as a photographer on missions in Northern Africa. To ensure the flying Santas weren't mistaken for enemy aircraft, the words Christmas Seal Plane were displayed on the sides of their planes in giant letters. All three resumed their Yuletide duties after the war's end. The program's popularity grew. Soon, Mr. Snow began delivering to lighthouses at the Great Lakes, along the Pacific Coast, and as far south as St. Augustine, Florida. On July 16, 1947, while piloting a sightseeing tour near his hometown in Rockland, Maine, Captain William Winkapaw suffered a heart attack and plunged a quarter mile off the public landing. He and a passenger were killed. During his service, attended by representatives of the Army and Navy, lighthouse keepers around the region blasted foghorns and rang warning bells in tribute to the Flying Santa. Edward Snow assumed all duties from the Winkapaws, and that holiday season, he airdropped a wreath in Rockland Harbor to commemorate his old friend, then visited 176 lighthouses and coast guard stations. Mr. Snow continued the modern sleigh rides through the sky for decades with his wife and daughter. He also became a renowned writer on Atlantic Coastal and New England maritime history, authoring dozens of books and hosting a weekly radio show for children about the mysteries of the sea. His flights mostly went without a hitch, but as of the nature of airdropping, 100% accuracy could not be guaranteed. Snow sometimes lowered to 35 feet off the ground to make deliveries. Yet once in a blue moon, the occasional package would misfire, landing through a car windshield, a skylight, or somewhere in the deep blue sea. Snow's Santa beard flew out of the plane once too, but it was recovered by a keeper and returned to Snow by mail with a note that read, Here are your whiskers, where's our package? By the 1970s, due to FAA regulations and insurance costs, some transports were made by boat, car, and helicopter. 
As more lighthouses became automated and managed by the Coast Guard, the number of keepers fell dramatically. In any event, the Flying Santa returned year after year. Edward Rose Snow passed away in 1982, having spent over 40 years as the Flying Santa. By then, the Hull Life Saving Museum, just away from the Boston Harbor Islands, began to oversee the program. Today, this cherished effort is supported by the Friends of Flying Santa, a nonprofit formed in 1997 to ensure that the mission prevails, with volunteer pilots and Flying Santas bringing gifts to the families of Coast Guard personnel at stations from New York to Northern Maine, including some of the very lighthouses around New England that Captain William Winkapaw visited over 90 years ago. 